Looking for strategies to help you protect your portfolio in these uncertain times? Visit robblack.com. Robblack.com. Powered by EP Wealth. Uh, did you see what NVIDIA did? We'll talk about that for sure. Have you been paying attention to the debt ceiling? We'll talk about that for sure. We'll probably try to squeeze in some hints, tips, tricks, and investment ideas as well. For the record, I need to legally say that I own shares of NVIDIA. Take, a, take everything uh, consult a broker advisor taking in any action on any stocks I ever mentioned on air, especially if I say I own it. Okay. Yesterday was a loser. Yesterday was a debt ceiling focused day at the NASDAQ, the S&P, the Dow. We're all down about three quarters of 1% in that ballpark. Not a horrible day. But definitely nothing to write home about. Stocks continued their downward spiral yesterday as debt ceiling talks drag. And now we're talking about sending Congress home for the long weekend. And is it? Aren't we going to run out of money on Monday or Tuesday? That's the thought. NVIDIA shot NVIDIA, 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 NVIDIA shot up in after hours trading after revealing its surprised revenue expectations thanks to soaring demand for their chips, which are notably needed for AI. We will talk more about this. But the company added $220 plus billion plus their market cap this year, and today is a day where it's up. Um, it's pushing 400 You're talking 70 bucks. So... <clears throat> We could say the Twitter was a no-go for Ron DeSantis. Kind of a disaster show, if you would. Um, and Musk has had a couple of these. When he introduced the Tesla a Cybertruck and the window broke on stage after he said, look, it's got shatterproof windows. And he throws a rock at it and whoops, it goes right through. Well, I didn't go right through. I shattered it, but you get the idea. Um, what a mess. Technical glitches galore. Trump's response I don't know if it was a Saturday Night Live skit or something, but he brings up Hitler. He brings up um, the devil. <laughs> he brings up uh, just drags about any name that he can into. I, it, it, I, I don't even know if he created it, so I'm just going to shut up. Let's just say it was a show in the political arena yesterday. I think that's fair to say. Oh, uh, I, listened to, I listened to Tina Turner last night. Um a lot so showed my kids what the powerhouse singer was all about songs like what's love got to do with it and the best she died yesterday age 83 in her home in switzerland for a long illness i think kidneys is what i'm hearing she began singing in the 1950s she remained hugely popular even as music transitioned from the 1950s ultimately into the mtv era with videos she did well in the video era 1980s and 1990s weren't hard on her. She had an abusive marriage. She's an icon to women, an icon to African Americans, and a major hit artist. So it was one that I wanted to show my kids. Not that it's going to mean anything to them in 5, 10, 15 years. Who knows what sticks, right? Yesterday was the one year anniversary of Uvalde. Uh, the Rob Elementary School, which was shot up by a teenager who killed 19 children and two teachers. A botched law enforcement response. Mass shootings. Oh, I wish I had something better than that to uh, lead with, if you will. Let's talk about today. Uh, whoops, just opened up a cookie warning. It's not what I wanted to do. And it wasn't a good kind of cookie, so it wasn't like chocolate chips. NVIDIA is distracting today from the debt ceiling. That's today's headline. Better than expected first quarter report, astounding second quarter guidance. The second uh, story of the day would be the debt ceiling. NVIDIA shares are up 30%. Um, it's bouncing around today in that ballpark. NVIDIA, how much it has shot up, is worth more than the entire market cap of Cisco Systems. That's worthy of note because I made a lot of money in 2000s, late 90s with Cisco. When I got on the show 25 years ago, 
ultimately is what I'm talking about. Uh, Cisco was the the sultan of switches, the ruler of routers. And yes, I used that line 25 years ago. And they were connecting computers with what were local area networks. So you can play video games with people in the same room, or you can do computing and work productivity in the same office. And local area networking became wide area networking, which became metro area networking. And then at one point in time, we sent uh, a, a probe up to Mars, the Mars rover, and it was sending the signals back to us. So we called it interplanetary networking. And Cisco was at the right place. This too will be the story of NVIDIA at some point, but probably not till we get to a pretty legit metaverse type world. NVIDIA is a trillion dollar company. It should be a trillion dollar company because if people like Mark Zuckerberg and companies like Apple want to create alternative realities and virtual reality workspaces that we can operate in. If I had to bet on one thing or the other, I'm betting on AI much, much bigger than I am on the metaverse. But NVIDIA is in both places. And if you're talking about where we are in AI, we're not even close to the second or third inning, maybe second in. Um, it has a ways to go. Does the stock have ways to go? Oof. It is really not easy to, uh, to have that kind of opinion. Great time to consider uh, covered call strategies if you know what you're doing. And I barely know what I'm doing. So you probably don't know what you're doing. But it's moved far fast. Always consult Parker Rise for taking action on any stocks ever mentioned on the show. Second estimate for first quarter GDP was revised up to 1.3% from a 1.1% number. That doesn't mean much. In large part, it's past performance. And Wall, Wall Street has another funny phrase. Um, past performance is not indicative of future results. And it's already happened. So when we look backwards at GDP numbers and revisions, we go, yeah. Yeah, we've, already, we've kind of already moved past that. But historically, if we see GDP negative for two quarters in a row, we're going to call, call that a recession. We're going to put a sticker on it. Initial claims for the week ending May 20th because it's Thursday, increased by 4,229,000. Um, the key takeaway is that the initial job claims are nowhere near a recession level. Nowhere near. We would have to get up to 400, 500,000 for weeks and weeks and weeks in a row. We're not anywhere near that. Interesting, right? Um, so let's talk a little bit. Uh, I think it's worthy of note. We should probably mention that summer's coming and airlines are going to be in the news a lot. We should probably mention a little bit about solar investment is set to overtake oil production. It's attracting over a billion dollars a day. Um, that's pretty cool. If you are a fan of wind, solar, nuclear, closing the gap with oil production costs and energy prices, 30. the clean energy world is getting cheaper and cheaper. Um, and we're going to hit our net zero emissions goals uh, by 2035, 2050 in that ballpark. Uh, I guess that's a good thing, right? We'll talk about this and much, much more. Big event coming up tonight, tonight in Palo Alto at the Elks Lodge. It's wealth preservation and retirement income planning with CFP Chad Burton, myself, 630 to 830 in Palo Alto. Retirement planning is more complicated than ever, and it can be hard to even know where to begin. So set aside Thursday evening, May 25th, and get ready to learn some strategies from Chad Burton and Rob Black that can help you retire better and pass on your estate while minimizing taxes. That's May 25th at the Elks Lodge in Palo Alto. This event will focus on retirement income and tax planning. If you're nearing or or are in retirement and have at least 500000 in investable assets, this seminar is for you. Chad will explain how to transition your portfolio from the accumulation phase to the income phase, which accounts to draw from first, how to protect your estate from long-term care costs, and much more. Learn how to invest during high inflation and interest rate moves, social security strategies, and managing IRAs and 401ks in retirement. Rob Black will share market happenings and trends. That's Thursday, May 25th, 6.30 p.m. at the Elks Lodge in Palo Alto. 
Alto. Sign up for the event at chadburton.com. For KDOW listeners, we'll waive the sign-up fee. Chadburton.com. It's a seminar night for me, which means an hour and a half drive to and from, which means I'm going to be grumpy in the morning, which means I'll probably do game show questions that'll teach you something about stocks and investing. Um, tomorrow, but today it's all about AI and about the event tonight in Palo Alto, Elks Lodge. And I've really figured this out about myself recently. This is my event now. This I've come of age where I went from a guy starting a company 25 plus years ago and promoting Wall Street on air, on radio and podcast 25 years ago. And now I'm coming into... I need to take my foot off the gas and think about retirement. So this event is really about me and I'll go into a little more detail on that um, because I do believe in what financial planners offer. If you have over 500,000, I think they could be incredibly beneficial to you in retirement. Uh, Tax planning and preparation thrown in, estate planning review and attorney partnerships where you get a big discount on your estate plan. Um, for me, it's it's significant. I have children. I've got a house in California. You have a house. You should have an estate plan. Um, I've bought a property two years ago. I'm buying a property sometime in the next year, even though mortgage rates are now above 7% and they're freaking me out because that means real estate prices are going to come down. So the real estate that I have will come down in value. But I think anything that comes on the market is coming down in value as well. So I'm not freaked out. It's just you have to have a financial planner to talk to to make sure that it's an appropriate decision to go forward with. I plan still to buy sometimes by mid-2020, 2024. 2024, that's a weird thing to say out loud. Um, College education planning. But you know what? My financial plan got turned upside down when my kid got into a private high school and he kind of needs it because he's got a dyslexia issue. Medicare planning, not there yet, but that's the only thing keeping me in the workforce is healthcare. Charitable planning wasn't charitable 25 years ago. I can tell you that I was going to work as hard as I could for every penny and keep it. I used to say Scrooge was my favorite movie because that freak ended up with a lot of money and didn't like giving it away. And the movie got ruined when he started giving stuff away. Next generation planning. How much do I leave to my kids without ruining them? This is all stuff financial planners help you with. Social security analysis. I have a bigger income than my spouse. Uh, do we take it early and invest it? Or like, but see that social security planning is going to have to blend into my financial planning because my tax rate is going to be heavily uh, not tied towards capital gains, tied towards dividends when I retire. So anyway, that's what we're going to be talking about tonight. And that's why the event is really for me, people with $500,000 or more. Um, I can literally say this and not, and I, I hope I don't piss you off. I got tens of millions, more than 10. That's crazy. And at 25 years ago, I had nothing. I had college debt and I invested and I invested and I invested, which brings us to NVIDIA. 25 years ago, I had a guest on the show, Christopher Knight. And I'm going to let you take a second, take a second. Christopher Knight, who is he? He was uh, on the board of directors for a little company called NVIDIA. And I was playing a game called Doom when I wasn't at work. I was playing Quake at night because I had a network, a Cisco Systems network. I had a router in the office and I was connected to the Internet and I was playing against other people. Now, I would work literally 16 hours a day and I'd video game for two and I'd do it at work because I had a network there. That's how old I am. Uh, But Christopher Knight came on my radio show 25 years ago and talked about NVIDIA. And it's kind of a high-end CPU kind of company, but it wasn't a CPU, it was a GPU. I was like, what's a GPU? He said, graphic processor unit. And why was Peter Brady on the board of directors of, of NVIDIA? I don't know. Maybe they liked having a celebrity could walk around and talk about uh, their product. I've owned NVIDIA, I've owned Apple, and I've owned Microsoft for a, over the last 25 years. And I have concentrated positions in Microsoft and Apple. Um, so I'm using covered call strategies with the financial planner. Like it's pretty nuts that this event's all about me tonight in Belo Alto at the Elks Lodge. But NVIDIA stock is exploding after guidance for the ages. 
and for the record, Christopher Knight was probably the nicest guest I've ever had on air. He was willing to answer all questions, Peter Brady. And I didn't really grow up with the Brady Bunch. I grew up overseas, which we didn't have TVs, which is kind of weird to think about. Uh, we had TVs. To just I didn't know German and Turkish and Japanese. So it didn't do me a lot of good. Um, so sad today. NVIDIA is up 75 bucks and Apple's up six cents. So sad. Uh, but NVIDIA cemented its status as one of Wall Street market's darlings. I'm a little bit scared that things are getting more and more concentrated. Company's market value is going to rise by $200 billion today. Um, Apple's $191 billion pop in November of 2022 is the current record holder. As far as biggest pop in a month ever, NVIDIA is going to take it out. NVIDIA founder and CEO Jensen Wong told analysts the very upbeat outlook reflects a fundamental shift to accelerated computing. In turn, that places NVIDIA chips that power generative AI in high demand. It's bringing on a whole bunch of other companies, but more on that later. Um, Stifle has uh, upped their price target to $370 a day and have a hold on it. They were at $300 yesterday. They say NVIDIA's recent momentum continued as first quarter results beat consensus expectations. They have what's called an A100 chip. Um, it is not part of the GPU world, per se, of graphic processing for video games. Uh, but they have both. GPUs are great for the metaverse and video games, which, for the record, a couple of years ago, NVIDIA and AMD came out with a uh, new product. And that was at the same time that and they come out with a new product every two years uh, for GPUs. And that was right about the time when Xbox Series X and the PlayStation 5 were coming out. And AMD got the contract for both. And people were like, oh, so AMD had its day in the sun and AMD will have its day in the sunshine again. They are going to not catch up, but they're going to play in this world. So Baird has a outperform up their price target to four hundred and seventy five dollars, one hundred dollars over where it is now, saying that their channel feedback on the strong H100 orders, notably related to chat GPT emerging in March, but uh, they failed to upgrade at that time. I think I just said they have an A100 chip, and now they also have an H100 chip, which are getting targeted towards, um, uh, I think it's called dual processing is the right way of saying it, which is heavily needed for ChatGPT. ChatGPT can do some cool stuff with video, uh, but parallel processing uh, based in acceleration at data centers, emergence of AI models notably related to ChatGPT and LLMs, large language models, if you've listened to the show for last year, you've done well. You've you've had the knowledge on AI. Dan Ives doesn't have a price target on it. He says there's not one better indicator around underlying AI demand going into hyperscale cloud and overall enterprise market than the foundational NVIDIA story. He's telling skeptics we're early on in this game. You can find me online at Rob Black Show, Twitter Rob Black Show, YouTube Rob Black Show. Sign up and come on out tonight for the event in Palo Alto if you haven't been to one before. If you have, let's do a portfolio review instead. Sign up for the event tonight in Palo Alto at robblackshow.com. Don't want to work forever? Check out the retirement planning guide on robblack.com. That's robblack.com, powered by EP Wealth. Let's talk something other than GPUs for a segment. Let's talk summer travel. It doesn't feel as sexy as NVIDIA. It's not, but still pretty strong telling us the economy is still alive and well. This week, it is set to be particularly busy for air travel. It's the busiest Memorial Day holiday in more than a decade, expecting to fly close to 2.9 million passengers from Thursday through Tuesday. Um, big number. It's going to be the busiest weekend for air travel since 2005. It's also the weekend that sets the tone for summer travel and international travels not slouch in any way, shape or form. Airfares to Europe this weekend are averaging $1,300 for a round trip, 50 percent higher than 2022, 40 percent above 2019 levels. So I did something kind of 
smart and stupid all at the same time when we were in the pandemic. I said, we're going to talk about things one day, pre-pandemic, pandemic, and post-pandemic. And at that time, we were thinking pre-pandemic is 2019, pandemic was 2020, 2021, post is 2022. Uh, maybe post has been delayed a little bit more. I don't know. It, it certainly hasn't been cut off on years. But airfares to Europe are averaging $1,300 for a round trip. That tells me that American, Delta, and United are going to do well because they're exposed to international travel. Domestic demand also looks strong. Seat capacity from U.S. airports is set to be 17% higher than the same weekend last year. Get to your airlines early, ladies and gentlemen. There are signs that domestic ticket prices are beginning to cool off. The average airfare for a U.S. round trip sold in April fell 6% to $551. So as an analyst, as someone who's looking at Wall Street for investment ideas, I don't play the airlines. I kind of sometimes wish I did because it would be I think it's pretty easy to look at. But they've got unions and this is an area that you're going to boo me. Get ready for the boo birds. Throw the tomatoes. I don't like investing in companies that have unions. That's not totally true, but generally speaking, Tesla is able to rock Ford and General Motors because Ford and General Motors have unions and legacy employees that they still pay for years and years and years and years after they've retired. Um, that's a problem in the investment world. So the divergence between domestic and international numbers can largely be explained by timing. COVID-19 testing requirements were still in place for travelers last year. This year, all the pent-up demand for travel post-COVID was funneled into domestic travel. This summer, with international travel back with a vengeance, the opposite is the case. United Airlines thinks it can reach earnings per share of between $10 and $12. They are warming to the target of um, earnings that they feel comfortable with. Strong demand over the weekend could be a harbinger that these guys have a little bit of play in them. So let's talk a little bit about probabilities. I took a lot of math college uh, math classes in college. I'm pretty good at math. So I'm pretty good at my favorite class was probabilities and statistics. Um, I like playing with, with numbers to the point that when I told my spouse that if I need to fall asleep on a Saturday and take a nap, I'll turn on a baseball game because it relaxes me. The statistics of baseball relax me. How can a pitcher who throws an ERA all season long of three be given up four runs in an inning? You're like, no, it can't happen. And I'm out like a light bulb. Numbers kind of relax me. It's a little bit, a little bit like that movie, A Brilliant Mind, but I'm not saying I'm brilliant. Just a little bit, a little bit like that. Um, I know that if you play blackjack, you want face cards and you hate small cards for the dealer. And most people don't grasp that. You're not counting how many small cards there are. You're counting how many face cards there are. And if there's none in the first half of the shoot, you bet big in the second half of the shoot. Um, and again, in no way, shape, or form would I ever endorse anyone gambling. I think most people lose at gambling, so I say don't do it. But probabilities are something that you kind of wax poetically about in life. And it's something that I try to narrow in on if I'm going to talk about anything on air. I like companies that have a billion plus users. 100 million plus users, anything uh, less than 100 million. I don't even give it my time. You can tell me that this company has an AI. Oh, good golly. I heard uh, Melissa Meyer in an interview yesterday. I know you're saying she was with Google and she was with Yahoo, right? Yes, yes, yes. Big time, bigly, bigly. And she ultimately, um, she's now working for a company that's like getting your contacts and your phone organized better. I'm like, that's a fall for grace. That's just to have a job. <laughs> that's that's not changing the world. Um, 
again, if your contacts, it could like say, hey, I clearly see that you're calling your friend Tony a lot. Did you know his birthday was on this date? And did you know he got a mortgage? So it's checking with LinkedIn and things like that. Uh, you see where I'm going out with that? Okay. I can't help myself. I can't quit myself. The hype in AI stocks, not a bubble yet. The little guy, the retail investor, hasn't been playing it. So we're going to get to bubble levels. We're just not there yet. The hype in artificial intelligence is real. I think artificial intelligence is going to change productivity in the United States, much like the internet changed productivity in the United States. And every company, even if it's Melissa Meyer's stupid little uh, appointment, uh, contact cleanup technology, Every company is going to be using artificial intelligence in some way, shape, or form. Trying to get more from the workers. And once you invest in AI, you don't have to pay it overtime. You don't have to pay it sick leave. You don't have to pay it maternity leave. The hype in artificial intelligence is real. Um, And so far, what we've seen is Microsoft, Alphabet, and NVIDIA. There will be others. Google Trend Search is something I look at on a daily basis when I'm just doing my research for the day. Chat GPT is a keyword. It's outpacing the search interest in Bitcoin. So right there, I'm going to tell you, I think Bitcoin has less upside. Interesting, right? Because I'm playing probabilities. Interest in tech stock is nowhere near levels reached during the pandemic era, speculative tech bubble. There's been bursts in attention following the peak in February 2021 that continues to get smaller and smaller and smaller in Google Trends. So if you're doing a search for tech stocks on Google, you might end up with a list of NASDAQ names. So it hit its peak, the word tech stock, as a Google search term 14 months ago. So as far as artificial intelligence goes, it's climbing the numbers. Massive implications for all businesses. ChatGPT, and it's got much more legs than the hype surrounding the metaverse, cryptocurrencies, and Web 3.0. So the appeal, I think, is going to be permanent. The hype around AI is given how transformative the recently tech launches from OpenAI and Alphabet have been seen. At this point in time, the attention from the average person who uses Google, it's nowhere near a peak. Just throwing it down there for you. Hope you're picking up what I'm putting down. 800-516-1220 to get your calls on the air. Anything that you want to talk about, we can talk about. You know, it's going to be a weird winner in AI. Even if they don't come out with product, and they will come out with product, is Apple. Because when you go to Apple Store and Google Store, and you want to get some sort of chat GPT for your phone. If it's going to cost 20 bucks a month, Apple's going to get 30% of that, uh, of that transaction, that 30% of new subscriptions. So OpenAI launched an iPhone app for the wildly popular chat GPT last week, and the app quickly rocketed to the top of iOS app source start charts. Again, do you start seeing how I play with numbers in my head and how I like to see them? And then I start working with probabilities. Um, I don't want to say, what's the basketball term? Ball don't lie. Um, I don't even know if that's right. That sounds right, but I don't know if it's right. I want to say numbers don't lie. I love data. So let's take a look at the big picture. NVIDIA's huge gain is boosting the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ today, as well as fueling buy interest in other semiconductor stocks. Fitch has put the United States AAA credit rating on watch. Now, Fitch isn't the biggest and most important One. credit reporting agency. I believe Standard Poor's is. But the dead ceiling worries are real. And tomorrow, Wall Street will have forgotten everything that NVIDIA did today. The longer we don't have a deal, the more stressed and anxious the market's going to get in the short term. And when a deal gets done, the more opportunity, I believe, and sold a broker rise of particular action on any thoughts I have, that this market has a little bit of a coil in it to go higher. Germany reported a second quarter of contraction in GDP, and it's fearing making the world afraid of 
growth concerns. So Germany is basically in a recession. And all I got is this stupid shirt. You can find me online at Rob Black Show. Big event tonight in Palo Alto at the Elks Lodge. I'll be talking about NVIDIA, the economy. Chad will be talking about wealth preservation and income planning and retirement. That's what the event's really about. Sign up today at robblackshow.com. Questions about Social Security? Check out the Social Security Retirement Guide at robblack.com. That's robblack.com, powered by EP Wealth. Two weeks ago, I was looking at my shows, and I was looking at the numbers on podcast, and I feel like I've slacked a little bit. So I'm putting a little bit extra effort into making every show powerful. I pledge if you listen, I'm going to do my best to get you a nugget or two to get you to retirement. AI is at its early stages because retail investors haven't started talking about it aggressively at the water core. Um, I've talked today about how Apple is starting to already win on AI just because they have a store where they take 30% of the cash transactions on purchases. That's a pretty good nugget for you. The IRS is boosting HSA limits for 2024 by a record amount. HSAs, if they're offered to you and you're not paying taxes on it and you can put pre-tax money into it, um, it's a pretty powerful thing. Health saving accounts. Um, I like that they're ramping up the number of your maximum HSA contribution, $8,300 for a family and $4,150 for an individual. If you think you're going to be spending money in healthcare, and I do. Over 20% of the money that we spend in our life is on health care. Uh, it's, it's a big part of the U.S. economy. So I keep trying to talk about these kind of things. Um, a little tips, hints, tricks. Self-made millionaire gave some advice on CNBC recently that I think it's funny because there's terrible life advice. Um. And if I were talking to my kids right now, I'm not saying things like cut down your screen time. I'm realistic. Screens are the future of work. Playing video games for 10 hours straight might not help for sure, but you can learn all sorts of lucrative new skills online. You can do side hustles. You can do a business plan. You can launch a website. I'm not screen times are bad. Go out and hug a tree. Um, The advice of don't sweat the small stuff. I say sweat the small stuff. Um, Unless you have crippling anxiety. I like focusing on the details. I want to do a really good job tonight. I want to do a, I want to do a better job on my podcast. Just throw that down there for you. Um, The advice that I hear about working for a big company eh, it's okay ideally when i was in my 20s and 30s ideally i would have been married to a woman who worked at a big company as i was an entrepreneur small and uh thrifty and i i didn't have enough money for health care whereas the big company gives good health care so you could kind of balance some of these financial issues in your life Um, I grew up playing video games and playing soccer. There's no jobs in soccer. I got to the college level, and then after college, I was like, do I want to go play in Italy for a year? Nope. But my two passions were soccer and video games. And I'll I'll tell you, my largest holdings in Apple, Microsoft, NVIDIA, have benefited in large part from that knowledge of video games. So I'm okay with following your skills and passion in career, but be realistic. And this is really pretty interesting. I was talking to a, a coworker at EP last week and he uh, was on the under 20 team for Nicaragua. And um, he, he flat out said, I got to the point where I was like, do I want a career? I have to leave soccer. And, uh, the dude has the skills to be elite worldwide player working at EP wealth. He's got the same skills of getting up early and practicing, sweating the small stuff. He's an elite trader. And I think that's pretty darn cool. 
Um, buy a house and settling down. Is that important or not? I think in a high inflation period like it is now, I think you need to be careful with it. But long term, real estate's great. Short term, real estate's very, very dangerous. I own real estate and the real estate that I've done well on is stuff that I've owned 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 years. I don't look at it as I have to make money today. For the record, if you're signing up for the event tonight, uh, it's really only appropriate for people with $500,000 more and people who haven't been to them because it's a very, very similar seminar to previous ones. So I'll have to cancel your ticket if you've previously signed up. Um, we just don't have enough space for repeat. Uh, here's a sad fact. Generation X is not saving enough for retirement. This is my generation. The average median retirement saving is $81,000. Generation Xers are nowhere near on track for what they'll think they'll need for a comfortable retirement. I think you need at least 1.2 to 1.4 million to retire comfortably somewhere in the United States or overseas. I think 2 million is a better number. For me, it was 4 million was my number. I blew way past that. But initially, my number was 1 million. And then a spouse, I added another million, 2 million for us. And then we added two kids and I doubled that number to 4 million. Um, now I'm playing with much bigger numbers, luckily, thankfully, pleasantly. But what's your happy retirement? You should save at least 15% of your pre-tax income each year for retirement, which includes any employer match. You should take advantage of HSA's health savings accounts when you're not paying tax on it and the money is used tax-free and it grows tax-free. So no capital gains tax, no income tax. And later on in life, you're not paying you know, on the back end. It's a pretty amazing tool, HSAs, that are, aren't, isn't widely known by most. Social Security at full age is 67 years old. And Generation Xers are going to have to play with retiring at 70 so they can get what they're supposed to in Social Security Plus. If you're not saving enough, you got to work longer. And that's fine. For some people, that's great. So for some people, it'll keep them young and alive. Anyhow, and anyway, a big event coming up tonight. Hopefully, you can make it out. Um, it'll be, it'll have a good energy. That's for sure. Um, after Palo Alto, I'm doing an event in Los Gatos late, late, late in the year. Probably some pints and portfolios around. Um, but this, it's wrapping up fast. The year moves quickly. You can find me online at Rob Black Show, Twitter Rob Black Show, YouTube Rob Black Show. S learn more about the event at robblackshow.com. It's robblackshow.com. Tell a friend about the show. And if you own NVIDIA because of the show, congratulations and good luck. I'll talk to you soon. Retirement planning is more complicated than ever, and it can be hard to even know where to begin. So set aside Thursday evening, May 25th, and get ready to learn some strategies from Chad Burton and Rob Black that can help you retire better and pass on your estate while minimizing taxes. That's May 25th at the Elks Lodge in Palo Alto. This event will focus on retirement income and tax planning. If you're nearing or are in retirement and have at least 500000 in investable assets, this seminar is for you. Chad will explain how to transition your portfolio from the accumulation phase to the income phase, which accounts to draw from first, how to protect your estate from long-term care costs, and much more. Learn how to invest during high inflation and interest rate moves, social security strategies, and managing IRAs and 401ks in retirement. Rob Black will share market happenings and trends. That's Thursday, May 25th, 6.30 p.m. at the Elks Lodge in Palo Alto. Sign up for the event at chadburton.com. For KDOW listeners, we'll waive the sign-up fee. chadburton.com. Um...